Every day that we celebrate, every day that we dance and sing and pray, we strengthen the bonds that assimilation policies sought to break among Native people, something that we are accomplishing right here with this year's Folk Life Festival, focused on Indigenous voices of the America. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. <laughs> My name is Helena Kapuni Reynolds. I am the Associate Curator of Native Hawaiian History and Culture here at the National Museum of the American Indian. I'm so happy to greet you this morning and to offer the opening blessing. Uh, the Oli Aloha, or the chant of greeting that I just performed for you, is composed by Hawaiian scholar Mary Kavena Pukui, and it's a way to greet everybody into this space. Um, what I'll also be doing for you folks is a quick pule or prayer. Um, asking for our ancestors to join us and our deities, asking for protection, forgiveness for any harms or mistakes, um, but also safety for everybody uh, following the conclusion of this festival. And then we'll end with a chant um, calling for wisdom um, throughout the next few days. So, epule kako. Ena kupuna na auma kua amena akua mai kahikihi a ikahikihi Mai ka ho'oku i akahala vai, mai o a o o na amelika, a me kapai ai na o Hawaii. Eia no mako e ako ko mai nei i ki ala no ka vehena, o ke ia aha ho'o na awao ma ka aina o iwi o ka po'e pi kalake. He noi ha'a ha'a ke ia ia oko e malama i kao mau keiki, a me ko mako o la kino, e ala ka i mai a mako ma na mea a pau o ki ia o la nei, a e kala mai a mako no na hewa, Na ino ino, ame na hi hia. E ho'opo mai ka ipu i kea naina mana mea a pau, a ma hope o kea hui ana, e olu olu oko e ho'i ho'i a mako, i ko mako home me ka palekana. E ia ko mako pule o iai o oko no mamua, o oko no ma hope, o oko no ma luna, a o oko no ma lalo. E ho mai ka ike, e ho mai ka ikaika, e ho mai ka akamai, e ho mai ka mau popopono, E ho mai ka ike papa lua, e ho mai ka mana, a mama ua noa. E ho mai ka ike mai luna mai e, o na me a huna no e au, o na me le. Hi, Poe Good morning. My name is Dennis Zotai, 
and I'm a cultural specialist for the museum and also a writer for Smithsonian Magazine. In partnership with Native people and our allies, the National Museum of American Indian fosters a richer shared human experience through a more informed understanding of Native people. As a National Museum, we represent tribes, nations, and communities from throughout the Western Hemisphere. In our own country, the United States of America, there are approximately 720 different tribes who speak over 250 different languages and dialects. So you can see the enormous challenge we have as one facility to try and represent so many diverse native people. Music is an important component that defines who we are as native people. And so we're going to share with you a very special song in our Kiowa language. And this is a welcome song to this year's Smithsonian 2024 Folklife Festival. This is Ralph Rentler, director of the Smithsonian Bicentennial Folklife Festival. If you enjoyed the festival, you'll be interested in this invitation. Ladies and gentlemen, an opportunity like this cannot be taken for granted. This evening, we are going to be beating our hearts out for you all, so I want to see people enjoying themselves. So get up and feed the music and do something about it, okay? Good morning. Oh my. Good morning. Wow, that's better. Thank you so much for joining us. 
My name is Sabrina Lynn Motley. I'm the director of the Smithsonian Folklife Festival. It is truly my great honor and pleasure to welcome you uh, to what promises to be a truly special festival. We are marking the 20th anniversary of this museum. We are acknowledging the incredible work of its staff, the vision of its leadership, and of course, all of the people whose stories they hold, objects they keep, and communities they collaborate with. Before we do anything, please join me in giving a round of applause to the staff of the National Museum of the American Indian. We also gratefully acknowledge the native peoples on whose ancestral homelands we gather as well as the diverse and vibrant Native communities who make their home here today. We also acknowledge the ancestors, as you've heard many times this morning. Um, I said yesterday that we are their promise, we are their hope, and we, look, we do this work with an eye towards the future. In this work, we lay the groundwork for that future that we cannot see and your being here means more than I could possibly say. We have a lot of music and dance and storytelling and food and friends and family, um, sorry, um, today that you will run into uh, and it's going to be a very special festival. If you haven't already told your friends and family to join us, please do. Um, I want to again thank all of the staff, particularly the staff uh, of the Center for Folklife and Cultural Heritage, folks who you'll see on the mall in brown t-shirts, our volunteers. I also want to thank all of the people who keep us safe and who, who clean our buildings. Um, again, it really does take a village and it's an incredible village at that. Um, without further ado, I would like to um, Call on, I'm sorry, I would like to call on Cynthia Chavez Lamar, who is the head of the museum. One of the things that happened um, a few years ago, another Cynthia, Cynthia Vidari, who works here at the museum, suggested a program uh, to celebrate the 20th anniversary. And because I'm either very wise or completely foolhardy, I suggested that we turn the entire festival into a celebration of this museum. At the end of the day, I think it was one of the best decisions that I have made since I've been here. Um, we have learned together, we have grown together, we have fought together, and we have made, I think, beauty together. So Cynthia, I wanna thank you again, and your staff, please join us. Thank you, Sabrina, for those wonderful words this morning. Goatsi, hopa. Greetings and good morning, everyone. Welcome to the National Museum of the American Indian. Today, we begin the 2024 Smithsonian Folklife Festival. It's an exciting day, and thank you all for being here with us this morning. As mentioned, this is a year of anniversaries for the National Museum of the American Indian. We're celebrating the 30th anniversary of the museum's New York City location, the 25th anniversary of the Cultural Resources Center in Suitland, Maryland, and the 20th anniversary of this museum here on the National Mall. And we can't forget this year is also the 35th anniversary of the legislation that founded the museum the National Museum of the American Indian Act. This museum is an acknowledgement of the years of activism and advocacy by Native people and others committed to seeing Native and Indigenous people and their cultures, arts, histories, and languages recognized and respected. The museum ensures our visibility as Native people in the narratives about America, which remains a strong commitment of the museum. 
And what better way to contribute to that visibility than with a folk life festival program that showcases the rich diversity and cultural heritage of indigenous people and communities of the Western Hemisphere. We're excited to welcome to our nation's capital the artists, makers, chefs, musicians, dancers, athletes, and storytellers who will be here the next six days. Many have traveled great distances to share their creativity, knowledge, and expertise through the festival. So please take the time to experience all that the festival has to offer. This program highlights the power of self-representation. It is an opportunity for visitors to hear from and talk with Native and Indigenous people. Throughout the museum's existence, we've understood that the best learning experiences happen when we directly engage with Native and Indigenous people. It's an approach that remains at the heart of the work that we do. And we're thankful that the museum, as part of the Smithsonian Institution, provides a platform to amplify the diversity of indigenous voices and stories. Speaking of thanks, I must express my deepest gratitude to everyone whose efforts have helped to get us here. This year's program, Indigenous Voices of the Americas, would not have been possible without the support of so many of you, especially our many generous sponsors and donors. Great thanks to the Margaret A. Cargill Philanthropies for their support of the festival and also of the museum, and to Bank of America for their commitment to the Folklife Festival and the Smithsonian. We can't do what we do without you, and we're incredibly grateful for your generosity. And thank you to everyone who has contributed their time, energy, and talents to this year's festival. In particular, I want to name a few individuals that have been truly essential to this year's wonderful program. And you've just heard her speak, Sabrina Motley, who's the director of the Folklife Festival. And on the NMAI team, we have Michelle Mononiki, who's the deputy director of the museum. Uh, Michelle Delaney, who is associate director for museum research and scholarship and Sean Turman, who is Assistant Director for Programs. Let's please give them all a great round of applause. And of course, many thanks to all of the participants who are here in Washington, D.C. to share your expertise, your talents, your creativity, your knowledge with all of us this next six days. We certainly appreciate your time um, here in DC and making the trip and, and, and just let's give them all a great round of applause as well. It's going to be a great festival and I'm just really looking forward to, to everything that we have to see and do. And with that, I will now turn this over to Kevin Gover, Under Secretary for Museums and Cultures. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I also have the, uh, the honor of, of being director of this museum for 14 years. And so it's great, as always, to be back at the NMAI. Uh, for those of you who are new to the festival or new to the museum, we welcome you. And for those of you who are, uh, have been here before, we welcome you back. It's my honor to introduce uh, Lonnie G. Bunch III the 14th Secretary of the Smithsonian. As Secretary, he oversees 21 museums, 21 libraries, the National Zoo, numerous research centers, and several education units and centers. Two new museums, the National Museum of the American Latino and the Smithsonian American Women's History Museum are in development. Lonnie was the founding director of the Smithsonian's National Museum of African American History and Culture he has chronicled the creation of the museum in a book aptly titled, A Fool's Errand, Building the National Museum of African American History and Culture in the Age of Bush, Obama, and Trump. <laughs> Dr. Bunch is the first historian to be secretary of the institution. In 2021, he received Francis highest, Francis' highest award, the Legion of Honor. Please join me in welcoming Secretary Lonnie Bunch.
Man, what a grand and glorious day. Isn't this spectacular? Um, first of all, Kevin, let me thank you, not just for the kind, overly kind introduction, but for the leadership that you provided at this museum and throughout the Smithsonian. And also, I want to recognize Cynthia, who has done such brilliant work as director of this institution. So thank you both. You know, today I feel old as dirt because my first Folk Life Festival was 1976 during the bicentennial. Yeah, I'm crying too. <laughs> what I realized was I was in graduate school and stumbled on the festival, and I was changed forever. The opportunity to understand culture, the opportunity to see culture in all its dimensions, music, food, dance. I can remember being mesmerized by sort of oh, French Canadian lagers from Maine and being taken by sort of um, Zuni dancers. And I realized that the Folklife Festival is something very, very special. And for me, it's special because when I was building the African American Museum, the first way we made the museum real was working with Richard Curran and many others doing, using the Folklife Festival. So the festival, in my mind, is really this amazing moment it's a moment that allows people to sort of revel in things that they don't know about, but it allows them to be made better by the personal interactions that they have. And for me, it's just a wonderful opportunity for the Smithsonian to do what it does best, to share its expertise, to work collaboratively with communities, and to make sure that the stories we tell are stories that resonate well on the National Mall. And what's special for me this year is celebrating the Nash Museum of the American Indian. 20 years ago, I was on the board of that museum, and I can remember flying back from Chicago to watch the procession down the mall. And what really struck me was that this was saying communities that are central to understanding who we are are finally being embraced on the National Mall. And to me, this museum always is a beacon, a beacon of what we should know more about, a beacon of understanding, and a beacon that challenges us to grapple with our history, but to recognize how we're all shaped and be made better by that history. I was struck so much by thinking about this year's festival, the opportunity to engage with so many different cultures, so many different people, the fact that thousands and thousands of people will come to this mall in order to be made better by this experience is what is so powerful to me. You know, and I've often said that the best museums cannot be community centers, but they can be at the center of their communities. And in some ways, what this festival does is it centers native communities. It centers them literally in the center of the Smithsonian, in the center of the mall, in essence, in the center of America you will experience amazing stories, amazing culture, but recognize while this is native culture, it is also all of our culture. It's the culture that shapes us all in profound ways. So we need to recognize that we're celebrating native cultures and we're celebrating and recognizing who we are because of that experience. And I think that in some ways, ultimately, what we learn is all the histories that we'll experience over the next several days are the histories that shape us all. And I am so pleased and humbled to be the Secretary of the Smithsonian to be able to welcome you all to this. So I would hope that we could continue to acknowledge the amazing leadership of these museums, but also of Sabrina and all the people that worked in the Folklife Festival. So I want to thank Sabrina, all the workers, and all the volunteers. So join me in thanking them for the work they're doing. You know, there's nothing more dangerous than giving a historian a captive audience and a microphone. But I want to use that microphone because I'm so excited and so pleased to get the chance to introduce Secretary of the Interior, Deb Holland. You know, Secretary Holland is an enrolled member of the Pueblo of Laguna, New Mexico, but she's also somebody who has shaped history and made history. 
She made history as the first Native person to serve as a cabinet secretary. She is among the first Native American women to serve in Congress. And she's done an amazing job of helping to transform the Department of the Interior. So I am so pleased and so fortunate and glad to be able to say, today we get to talk to somebody who's so special and welcome me and helping me welcome Secretary Deb Holland. Is so kind. Um, hello, everyone. Happy Folk Life Festival. And thank you so much, Secretary Bunch, for inviting me to join you today and for that very kind introduction. I'm also so proud to be here with my Pueblo sister, Cynthia Chavez Lamar. Uh, it's wonderful to know that she is here uh, from my home state of New Mexico. And um, this is always a wonderful place to be. Um, so I'm happy to join our friends and partners across the Smithsonian Institute who connect the American public with cultures, traditions, and life ways from around the world. I'm grateful for your dedication to telling these stories. And that's something that we have in common. At the Department of the Interior, we're committed to telling our country's stories as well, even when they're difficult. I'm grateful to my colleagues who come to work every day with that mission at top of mind. Many of them are within the National Park Service under the leadership of Director Chuck Sams, who I know you'll hear from shortly. As America's storyteller, our national park system helps preserve and honor important individuals and chapters in our history. That includes places like the Emmett Till and Mamie Till Mobley National Monument in Illinois and Mississippi, which President Biden designated last summer. I had the honor of joining the family of Emmett and Mamie Till Mobley um, and community members during a celebration of the monument last year, and now three locations will help tell the story of Emmett's life and of Mamie's bravery in the wake of her son's horrific murder. Bravery that helped awaken our country to injustices that we could no longer ignore. Places like this tell the stories that must be told by those who live them. And that's why President Biden signed an executive order earlier this year that challenges us to think bigger about how we tell our country's story through the eyes of the women who have shaped it. The executive order charges the National Park Service with undertaking a comprehensive review to assess what they are already doing and, importantly, what more they could be doing to recognize women's history. The service plans to investigate the stories of women and girls spanning pre-colonial contact to temporary America and their roles in countless professions. It will also take an intersectional approach to include women from all background, communities, and identities, from race and gender identity to tribal affiliation, age, and income status, because each story matters, each story is important. Some folks have tried to keep these stories from being told. Nowhere is that more obvious than with the harmful policies that were designed to eradicate indigenous people in this country. When I announced the Federal Indian Boarding School Initiative in 2021, I didn't realize it would become a legacy issue for our department. Our goal was noble and mighty, to unravel the intergenerational trauma that has plagued our communities since the start of this horrific era, an era that saw indigenous children, including my grandparents, torn from their families and taken to government-sponsored schools that stripped them of their languages, their cultures, and their ways of life, the very things that you will celebrate this year. Now in our fourth year, the Federal Indian Boarding School Initiative has grown. We began with an investigative report that our Indian Affairs team, led by Assistant Secretary Brian Newland, poured their hearts into. This is the first time in the federal government has researched the details of these schools, the children who attended, the impacts their assimilation policies had on those children, their families, and the larger communities. 
Volume two of that report will be released soon. Then we went on a road to healing, a year-long tour across the country to bear witness to the many survivors and descendants of boarding school policies. This was such a powerful way to share stories, to cry together, to begin to heal, but also to chart a path to create an oral history for future generations. Now with funding from the Mellon Foundation and the National Endowment for the Humanities, we've launched an oral history project to document the first person experiences of the American Indian, Alaska Native, and Native Hawaiian children who attended the federal boarding school system. We are honored to work with the Smithsonian to share expertise and resources in pursuit of a long-term exhibit that will allow first-person survivor stories to be told long after the secretary or I are in these positions. We have so much more to do to reconcile this painful chapter in our nation's history, but our progress is real. Of course, this progress hinders on not just telling our stories, but celebrating the beauty and bounty of our communities, something that we are accomplishing right here with this year's Folk Life Festival, focused on indigenous voices of the Americas. Every day that we celebrate, every day that we dance and sing and pray, we strengthen the bonds that assimilation policies sought to break among Native people. Thank you for telling our stories and keeping them alive. I'm so thrilled that so many of you are here today. And I know that you're in for an incredible time as you explore the stalls and vendors that this year's festival has to offer. Dawa e. Thank you all so much for having me today and enjoy the festival. Thank you. Buenos días a cada una, a cada uno de ustedes, a sus abuelas, a sus abuelos. Muchas gracias por permitirnos estar aquí. Good day to everyone, to your grandmothers, to everyone who's here, and thank you for joining us today. It's a pleasure to be here. Esta es una canción para honrar a nuestras abuelas, para honrar nuestro ser como mujeres, como pueblos indígenas. This is a song to honor, to honor our grandmothers, to honor the women, to honor uh, us as indigenous people. Es una canción de amor, es una canción de emancipación, porque nuestra voz es nacimiento de fuego, porque nuestro ser habita la memoria y porque esta es nuestra raíz. This is a song of liberation because we are the birth of fire, because we want to honor the memory of our ancestors. Chey Chey, Pueblo de América, es un honor para mí poder cantar para ustedes, junto a Sara, unir nuestras voces en este gran homenaje a nuestras raíces, a nuestras abuelas, a nuestra cordillera de los Andes, a nuestra tierra americana. It's an honor to be here with Sara, to sing, to honor our grandmothers, to honor the mountains, the Andes, all of the Americas and to come together to sing here for you. Yeah. 
yo he nacido entre montañas, entre tejido de tierra, aire, agua y fuego, palabras sin miedo, como aquel danzante en la esquina del universo. Soy un granito de maíz en el surco del tiempo, sembrado en un vientre, en un vientre de barro, con rocio y canto de sol. Eso es lo que soy, eso es lo que soy. Como mis abuelas con su alma guerrera, como la tierra, yo tengo piel morena. Soy mujer indígena, nieta de la luz. La historia de mi abuela, de mi madre, mis hermanas Sin miedo de sistema, resistiendo estamos Nos reafirmamos aquí, seguiremos levantándonos Con el latido fuerte, con latido valiente Con latido de fuego, con digno latido rebelde Esto es lo que soy piel morena, soy mujer indígena, nieta de la luna, esta es mi fuerza, como mis abuelas con su alma guerrera, como la tierra, yo tengo piel morena, soy mujer indígena, nieta de la luna. Sara Kurruchich, Cachiquel, Guatemala, Nadia Larcher, Diaguita Calchaquí, Argentina. Muchas gracias al Folk Festival. Beto, muchísimas gracias. Nadia Larcher y Sara Kurruchich. Thank you. Hi everybody, my name is Cliff Murphy and uh, I have the, uh, the unfortunate um, role here of following that amazing performance. Um, <laughs> I'm also the director of the Smithsonian Center for Folklife and Cultural Heritage. 
Through the festival and our other programs, we engage with communities to strengthen living traditions, cultivating curiosity, understanding, and belonging for all people. Succeeding in this mission depends on both support and collaboration with partners. And so, in addition to our gratitude to NMAI for their steadfast partnership in this work on this year's festival, we're also deeply grateful to our other Smithsonian partners who have helped bring this year's festival to fruition. The Smithsonian American Women's History Museum, the Asian Pacific American Center, and the National Museum of the American Latino. Thank you. And you can clap there for our <laughs> incredible partners. Additionally, I'd like to give a heartfelt and special thank you to Mr. Jerry Brocon, who is here with us today. Uh, his longstanding support for, uh, of the Smithsonian alongside his late wife, Bonnie, is truly inspiring. Jerry, your generosity has reverberated across this institution, is deeply appreciated, and is a testament to our shared vision of a world where diverse cultures thrive together. Thank you. Since 1967, uh, we have had the distinct pleasure of partnering with the National Park Service to produce the Smithsonian Folklife Festival. This is one of the longest running interagency cultural partnerships in the nation's history. What the National Park Service and the Smithsonian produce together may look like a festival, and of course it is, uh, but what it really is is an incubator with programs that have generated city, county, state, tribal, federal, nonprofit, and international cultural heritage initiatives that amplify and nurture complex cultural ecosystems long after the tent poles come down on the National Mall. Now this year, the festival that we produce with NPS helps to serve as a platform to, uh, to further the self-determination of tribal nations in the United States and to provide a window into the stunning, vital diversity of indigenous cultures and communities across the hemisphere. So, I would like to thank the National Park Service, particularly National Mall Superintendent Jeff Reinbold and his team, who we work with so closely, and for the support of the director of the National Park Service, Chuck Sams. Our annual work on the, on the uh, festival embodies our agency's shared stewardship of the nation's natural and cultural resources. So I would like for you to give a very warm and uh, robust welcome to the director of the National Park Service, Chuck Sams. Good morning, my friends and relatives. My Indian name is Mockingbird with Big Heart, and I come from the place of the Big Springs on the Umatilla Indian Reservation. I spoke in my Umatilla language with a bit of Nez Perce accent for those who speak the Plateau region's languages and some Kokopah. First and foremost, I want to thank Secretary Bunch and Secretary Holland for their remarks and leadership and thank you all for this very warm welcome. In the 1990s, I was living in New York City, working with youth across all five boroughs of that city. I was so very fortunate to attend the opening of the George Gustav Hay Center at the Alexander Hamilton U.S. Custom House in Lower Manhattan in 1994, displaying some of the many things that we have also here at the National Museum of the American Indian. But little did I know that seven years later I would be helping with the planning of the wetlands and native plants that you see around this National Museum of the American Indian, which officially opened 20 years ago. And to be able to participate and bring native plants from all over this country to display what we as native people do in protecting both flora and fauna to ensure that it is here not just for us, but for seven generations ahead. The museum is not just about our past. It is a living history. Most recently, 
while walking through the nation to nation treaties between the United States and American Indian nations with my son Chauncey, I was able to point out a picture of Matasa B. Zia, Yankton Chief Smutty Bear. For you see, he's my ninth great grandfather, my son's tenth great grandfather. And he was the signatory to four treaties with the United States. We were able to draw a direct line from one's past to one's present in a very powerful way. For it speaks to how we recognize and celebrate our shared history as Americans. It's always great to be here on the National Mall. And I want to take just a moment to thank all the dedicated National Service employees here and at all 429 parks, monuments, and places that we steward. Steward these places to tell a story. Yes, to tell America's story. This day and this festival are all about story. A story that we will tell together and a story that we will tell fiercely and in full. Just last month, I was in Colorado to dedicate the newest park, Amachi National Historic Site, where thousands of Japanese Americans were incarcerated during the Second World War. It was an incredibly moving day, and the power of that place is amplified because it's just a few miles from the site of the Sand Creek Massacre, where Cheyenne men, women, and children were killed by US troops in 1864. Secretary Holland and I paid our visit and our respects at Sand Creek just two years ago to talk about the healing that is taking place between the Cheyenne. And today, Cheyenne youth stand with the descendants of the Japanese Americans who were incarcerated and are working together to talk about our shared history and the healing that can come from that. These sites and many sites of conscience like it remind us that a complete account of our nation's history must include our dark chapters too. And when we shine a light on those dark chapters, we encourage new perspectives and create space of he to heal and grow, and we continue striving to form a more perfect union. There are so many ways to lift up and honor indigenous voices, and I look forward to hearing many of them during the, this festival. For folk life, celebrates our traditions, activities, skills, and particular products from many cultures and groups of people that make up the United States of America that make up the diversity of who we are as Americans. I'm particularly proud of the work we are doing at the National Park Service under the leadership of Secretary Holland and the Biden-Harris administration to strengthen and honor our relationships with, with tribes through co-stewardship and co-management. We're listening to and learning from indigenous knowledge of those who have lived on these lands and cared for them for thousands of years. And we work to be better stewards and confront the challenges of climate change. So, as a co-sponsor of the Folklife Festival, the National Park Service is participating in this year's festival theme, Indigenous Voices of America by Telling the Stories of Tribal People on the National Mall. Visitors to the mall can find a QR code on the wind boards that connects to online resources about programs and stories of Indigenous people of the Americas. And I encourage you to download those and hear those stories. I want to thank you all again for celebrating the indigenous voices and for allowing me to add a few minutes of my voice to this wonderful event, and I hope you really enjoy your week. Thank you. How are you doing today? My brothers and sisters of America, I welcome you. It warms my heart that we are here in the nation's capital. Kwe ni Dalawasi Gray Marshall, Naspi member two. Wula na Mi'kmaq geek. We are part of the Mi'kmaq tribe that is on the eastern door. We are part of a confederacy that is known people of the dawn. So the sun greets us on Turtle Island for the rest of Turtle Island. It is an honor and we want to welcome you, and we want to each and honor each and every one of you with our honor song. And when we translate it to English, it means let us greatly respect one another. Let us celebrate who we are. And let us help one another as the Creator has put us here on Mother Earth. 
Brothers and sisters, it's the Mi'kmaq honor song. Ego, Igane, Ego, Ego, Igane, Ego, Ego, Igane, Ego, Guanu, Dane. Get me the jamane, don't tell me I'm not there. Nigga, my story, my way down there. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, sons of member two. I also would like to extend our gratitude to Ford Philanthropy for their dedication and their support of our food waste programming, to Maurice F. Smith and Bino Solomon for their individual contributions to our lacrosse program, which is going to be wonderful. You don't want to miss that. The Inter-American Foundation, the Embassy of Chile, Canada, and Mexico for supporting participant travel the Washington Airport Authority and Metro for their essential promotion, promotional support. And lastly, Hobbs, Strauss, Dean, and Walker, LLC. Most of all, I want to thank you for spending your morning with us. I encourage you to come back to this festival day after day, at least until July 1st. Um, as you can see, you just got a taste of the 
uh, a bit of the 60 countries that will be represented on the mall and more than 300 participants coming from all over the Americas who will be here to share the work of their hands and the love that they bring from their heart. Um, I was really struck by um, something that uh, Director Sam said, and uh, it reminded me of a James Baldwin quote that talked about the work of mirroring and magnifying each other's light. That's what this festival does, and that's what we do together. I really want to thank you again for being here. And I have one last question. Was anyone here for the, besides the folks that we know, here for the first festival, the, when the museum opened its doors? Thank you for coming back. I'm going to actually. Yeah, right. <laughs> Please do it. For those of you who were here for that really special moment in 2004 when the museum opened its doors to the public here on the National Mall, I'm going to ask you to, if you wouldn't mind um, going to the back, and I'm going to ask our guest in the front to lead us all. Um, to the plaza where there will be a presentation of the colors. Thank you all so much. It's been a wonderful morning. <laughs>